What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Chart Guys team for about half that time, where I head up our futures room and our swing report. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can relatively safely play uh, earnings and also hook you up with some with a free setup or two going into next week uh, for a follow-up trade off an idea that has already worked. And then, of course, update you on some of the ideas that we've been talking about uh recently so let us get into it so start off with gd here um i will include the uh original setup information for gd although it's very straightforward and if you've been watching these videos then you know i'm sure you can reverse engineer it for yourself at this point basically the idea was all right well we had all of this supply that's that was this was former supply here and it was sitting on top of all of this uh, price action here and so once we traded above it it made sense to be looking for back test plays off of it knowing that on the weekly time frame we were just looking for a weekly higher low and that as long as we were holding over this guy as long as we we're holding over this guy then the buyers were very confident now full disclosure you know the uh, first i didn't capture anything in this right and the reason why i'm covering it now is twofold one is because it's it's already came into our trades when i hit the target and two because i got a question about okay well because i set out an alert saying hey listen you know this not doing what we wanted to do before earnings and earnings is coming up and so i just said listen if you have any initiations in the trade zone the safest thing to do would be to just come out of it and then we'll wait for after earnings to make a play you know a, a subsequent play follow-up play and that was fine but i guess after the rip up uh, from the earnings reaction i guess people were curious and uh, asked you know how could we have captured it um in relatively safe fashion because you know what i said was if you do want to hold through it then you have to be sized appropriately so that can be a number of different things like probably if you only trade shares right then and you want and you, you really want to play earnings you have high conviction or um, for whatever reason then one way to do it is just just to cap your risk by the amount of the cost of the share the actual shares itself right like instead of calculating your risk right like let's say you wanted to risk you know a thousand bucks and this is like 2.3 percent risk then you would just you know come over here and you would take your thousand bucks and divide that by 0 0.023 and then you would know that you could use a forty three thousand four hundred seventy eight dollar position get stopped out for 2.3 percent and then you know just be uh, receiving that drawdown of 1,000. So, you know, instead of doing that, instead of using this 43,000, uh, roughly 43,000 um, uh, position sizing, you just use however, just use 1,000 shares, right? And then worst case scenario, you know, even if it were to go to zero, which obviously wouldn't happen, basically you would be way well within your risk parameters if you wanted to kind of YOLO this with uh, shares. Alternatively, you can also use options, right? Like you could have just bought a call spread in this kind of a situation. I, I don't know, this GD, so the chain should be fine. So, you know, you could have, ideally what will happen is you, we can position first and then have some profit cushion and then we're much more comfortable with it. But, and let's assume if that is the case, I like to do this in futures. Like if you, if I'm day trading futures and it's like a Friday, even if it's not a Friday, if I want to hold that position overnight, I don't really want to hold the futures contract overnight because the overnight session can chop around. It can very easily break a stop and then come come back into a range and, and whatnot. So um, then what I would prefer to do then is to book those futures profits and then just buy like a, a vertical spread or even just a naked call or put. And then my risk is capped based on the cost of the, debit for the call or the put and so you know in honestly we get this question quite quite often like how how can we play earnings and you know we always say it's it's a bit of a gamble you never really know how the, how market will respond to it um but if you are going to do it it should be something like this where you can control your risk the, the key to to longevity in the market is really outflows you can never control your inflows just like in real life you can never control your inflows you can only control your outflows like if you have interest a romantic interest Right. You can't control whether or not they will reciprocate your feelings, but you can control your outflow. Well, how much effort am I going to put in? Right. How, how you know, am I going to keep pursuing this person if I get rejected? Right. Am I going to go work out in the gym? Right. Am I, am I willing to spend time and effort into trying to get the inflow that I want, knowing that I have no control over the inflow? I only have control over, again, my expenditure, my outflow. So, you know, it's 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 much better to enter the market and think about it in this way because there are very few. Most things are outside of your control, 
right? If not everything, you know, arguably everything is kind of out of your control. So, um, yeah, so if that's the case, then things that you can control for, that's what you should prioritize, right? Because obviously if something's out of your control, it makes no sense to try to control for that, right? That's just a, you know, uh, uh, an endeavor in madness, really. Anyway, so um, that pretty much covers it. That's that's it. I, I don't even know if I'll, I don't think I'll include the trade, original trade. It, it, it's very self-explanatory at this point. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now from here, what are, we, what are you looking out for, for continuation? Because you know that there is space for a daily higher low you know, we just broke out into all time highs. Um, you just move this bad boy up. Just like last week we were talking about, it's the same idea. Last week we were just saying, okay, well, you just move this new trade zone up to something along these lines. Let me just check to see where there, if there is more volume traded up here. And let me hide this, this guy. Yeah, something like this, you know, is totally reasonable now. Like, hang on a second here. Something like this is pretty reasonable, right? You don't want to see follow through back down under this point of control. Ideally, what will happen is they'll just hold over the buyers will just hold over 256.32 on a back test. You really don't want them to come back down here because this is technically the key demand zone. This is the last area where price just broke out of. So if buyers can get uh, sellers can get back under 254.91 this high, that would be a bit of a red flag. But as long as they're holding over this structure, then you know, you, we should just expect balance. So something like this is pretty reasonable for a more uh, aggressive follow-up play. You can even open it up some because the R multiple is pretty good on this. So even something like this, dragging it out, basically just moving the highs of the trade zone and keeping the lows of it more or less the same, still a decent R multiple just to get back to testing the highs. And if this, if you do come down from here, you don't see fall through on this higher high, that's pretty much the best case scenario is just sideways. And if we're going to see sideways, then it should be over this guy. You know, so you put that all together and this becomes a pretty reasonable trade zone. All right, so that's pretty much it for GD. For Microsoft, Microsoft is the one where we talked about um, buying it on this day. We explained the context of it, very similar to GDX. It's in a prior video. The idea was just that the gap up over all of these resistances would trap all these sellers. And so far, we'll still be seeing good follow-up around this. So uh, subscribers, if you are still working with your runners, then I have half of the, posi the remaining position with a stop under this these three days, this, this little three-day balance here. And then the rest of it, I have it under here. And I think that's a very reasonable approach right now because, you know, obviously our entry was here. So even if we get stopped out there, it's a very decent gain. If we get stopped out here, it's a small gain, but still good. And because we bought the open and there was very little risk on that, you should, if, if you traded it along with me in the same fashion, using the trade zone shared in the pre-market, then, you know, it's, uh, you should be sitting pretty. You know, you you should you you, you had the um, the appropriate uh, circumstances to 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 get really big. So yeah, you should be sitting pretty. Um, and that's 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 really it. Like for a follow up trade for Microsoft is also quite reasonable. You just again you just move this you know bad boy up like this, and then that's totally reasonable trade zone. If you're looking for a follow up on this, you just be mindful that earnings is next week. So you probably want to wait for earnings to shake out and then. Uh, you know, make a play. You do have to also be mindful that there's a bunch of tech earnings um, next week. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for Microsoft. Space for a daily higher low to be set over 384.81, but really what I care about is this prior high, 384.30. The buyers would be most confident if they can maintain over 384.30. Alternatively, if you're looking for a follow up trade, you can let value, session to session value, move lower for a session or more. And then the first opportunity that you have uh, where there's a strong open over the prior sessions, then that would be a good, uh, reasonable place to uh, look for a potential buy, okay? So that is it for Microsoft. And then moving on to TNK. So TNK, this was uh, one that was shared recently as well because of the follow-up trade, how to capture the follow-up trade. And so the fact that these sellers are just perfectly holding back tests of this prior high here, is this is a very constructive look here. Now, that being said, this is still key supply here. This is a major area of supply here. So, you know, wouldn't be too surprised if we were to continue to stall here, buyers, I mean, were to continue to stall here. Um, but the idea then going forward is as long as, as long as this structure here, this demand zone is supportive of price, then they should be trying to come up here. So I actually rather like this trade zone pretty much as is again, because if you reject from here, you, we should expect a test of here. 
54.14. If we don't see follow through new highs over this high, we should expect to be operating within something like this choppiness, and which would mean then that we should expect the test of this area. And so why aren't we moving it a little bit higher? Because it can very easily, you know, come down and test this area. Like it doesn't have to be a perfect hold. So I think a more conservative trade zone would be something like this. I would just leave it exactly how we had it last week. You know, there is space for a, uh, oops. There is space for another weekly higher low to be set over uh, 49.35. So if we bring that trade zone back, this essentially would be a play for a weekly higher low. Okay. Um, so that is it for TNK. And then finally, GDX. Not really anything has happened. Bigger picture, GDX. Uh, we were talking about this guy because it's back in our original trade zone. This one already came into our trade zone and hit the target. Um, but I, I think it's still pretty reasonable because bigger picture, we're, we're really just looking at balance over this guy and under this guy. So as long as this structure is holding, they should be trying to come up here. So I still think this is a pretty uh, reasonable um, trade zone. And it's that's that's really it. It's not... That's really it, honestly. That being said, there is now space for a weekly lower high to be set under 32.35. And so a more patient buyer, you can let the sellers have their way some more, like let value move lower for a few sessions. And then if you get a strong open over the prior session, again, it's not always gonna work. Like for example, here was a big gap and that was a stop out. But the idea is if it does work, it works really well and you'll find out pretty soon uh, whether or not you're right. So, you know, that's, as close to as good as it gets in the market, you know, like if you have the appropriate context, um, then it becomes a matter of the tactic that you deploy. And if your tactic uh, allows you to uh, get in in very asymmetrical fashion, then that's as good as it gets that's, that's in the market. You know, you don't, there's no guarantees. So um, that's pretty much it. I'm not so interested in TDX, uh, particularly because I, I'm going to put some attention into ARM. If you've been um, following along in ARM, uh in these public videos i do apologize but i did like a deep deep dive into arm recently and I, I i had some activity last week so uh i'm just you know pushing that to our subscribers um but yeah if you're interested you know consider giving us a uh a shot this report a shot link is in the description um but you know if you're happy with these videos then i'm happy to have you here um so that is it for this <laughs> for this uh, video. And so appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for sharing some of your uh, time and energy with me. And again, if you are interested in uh, the Strong Report or our community, links are below. And uh, that's it. Hope to see you soon. Farewell. What's going on, everybody? Checking in for this week's uh, first novel idea. And it's within the industrial sector. So the industrial sector is looking pretty hot. It's pushing all time highs. This daily retracement was not that big compared to the overall market. There's space for a daily higher low. And as long as these buyers are able to hold over a back test of this structure, then they're going to be just fine. So our pick within the industrial sector looks kind of similar. Just pressed into all time highs. Back test of this key structure is, would keep the buyers totally fine. You can see how this structure has already proven itself to be very meaningful with three rejections from the value area low, two rejections from the point of control and the value area high clearly telling us that it's you know, it's meaningful, it's supportive here. So this is essentially a play for a potential daily higher low, essentially a play for a potential weekly higher low. I think I like this trade idea a lot. And, you know, there's also the war narrative, but to be fair, you know, not all the defense contractors are really looking so hot. So like here's a Lockheed, um, Boeing, not near all time highs. What's Northrop Gunnams? I forget. NOC. NOC is also not near its highs. And then you have GD, right? These are the, pretty much the top defense contractors. And I know General Dynamics specifically has, you know, a ton of contracts with the government. So with the US government. So yeah, and then from a technical perspective, this just seems this just makes a lot of sense, right? Like for example, here's here's the prior balance that was sitting on top of all time highs, and pretty much all of these lows were made off of back tests of this. This high, this high, this high, which was pretty much, you know, relative to this structure, this structure made these highs and back testing of these highs is what allowed, uh, was where these uh, buyers last time tried to press into new highs. Obviously a higher high failed with no follow through, but there was plenty of opportunity here to play, you know, a balance, the balance game, essentially like what uh, Dan's uh, recent 
trade strategy that you shared on YouTube was. So that's really it. This one is super, super straightforward. The one thing that we do have to be mindful of is that earnings is coming, like earnings season's right around the corner. So, you know, it becomes a little bit trickier to start uh, swing trading, but I mean, to swing trade around earnings season, but ideally we can position before things get too crazy. And, you know, it's nice that this has a dividend as well. And I believe liquidity is pretty good. Uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm probably not going to share the open plays anymore um, because I, I think it's tricky for uh, people who are primarily focused on swing trades, even though that's how I, I like to swing like that. Like I like to position off of that. Um, I will still share those trades, but like I'll probably always write a disclaimer and I'll be more um, picky with when I decide to take that kind of a strategy. I'll probably stick to uh, providing a trade zone for like more active traders. I'm probably going to stick to uh, giving you a trade zone in the pre-market for like a specific picker, uh, not picker, <laughs> ticker, um, like in Microsoft last week. So um, that's that's really it. This is a very straightforward setup. I like it a lot. I will def I would definitely look to trade this one because, I mean, just kind of seems like there's more conflicts <laughs> going around. So, yeah, <laughs> the fundamental reason, technical reason. So uh, I'm interested. It also pays dividends. So I'll probably do this in the um, IRA. Now I don't think it's like a super high dividend yield, just two percent. Um, but that's pretty much. It. I, I don't I don't really see. I don't, I don't really see, uh, you know, the U.S. military pulling back. It, if anything, it would appear that many of our allies, particularly in the Pacific, are ramping up their military spending, specifically Japan, for example. So, yeah, we shall see. Um, that's pretty much it for GD. So I'll see you all really soon for the other novel trade idea.